We found a way to grow our 401k and pay off all of our debt. Let me show you how we did it. Welcome in to Lemons to Lemonade Furniture. My name is Kara and flipping furniture out of our garage in Dallas, Texas has allowed our family to reach financial freedom. Come along with us and I'll show you how it's done. Today's project is a custom order. My client picked this up at a garage sale. I'd love to know more about the history of this piece, but unfortunately there are no markings on it whatsoever. I'm not a big fan of doing farmhouse styles these days, but this one is going to be in my client's beach house and she's requested a driftwood beachy finish to this. So be sure to stay tuned to the end and I'll show you the inspo picture that she sent me to start this flip. This buffet had some decorative trim pieces on it. Some of them were missing, some of them were broken. So I took these off of here the rest of the way, the ones that were still attached. Plus it gave it just a more of a dated farmhouse look and that is not what we're going for with this flip. So I went ahead and removed them. I've gotten the buffet taken apart and vacuumed out and now it's time to wipe it down with some simple green and some warm water. I like to use simple green on all of my pieces and then I'll go back with some clean water when I'm done. All of that right there is actually not dirt. That red stuff is tannins from the wood. So I know right away that I'm going to have some bleed through issues on this, which means I will definitely need to prime before we paint. I'm checking to see if my veneer is lifting anywhere and if it does I will need to take my little glue syringe and put some wood glue underneath and patch this overnight. But I'm not getting any lifting in this area which means I can fix the veneer chips with some wood putty and I don't need to worry about any of this lifting later on. The client has asked for a sanded and stained top on this. And before I take a sander to this, I need to figure out what grit I can use on it. So what I need to do to figure out that is to see what I'm working with. I need to see if this is a solid piece of wood or if this has veneer on top. So let me show you how I figure that out. I can tell right away that this is not a full piece of wood. The pattern on the side does not continue down the side of the piece. Plus the easiest way to tell is to look at the back and this part right here at the top is a piece of veneer. Since I know this is a veneer top, I'll start with a 120 grit sandpaper and work my way up to a 240 grit. This is a thicker piece of veneer that's in really good shape as far as it's all still intact and it's still thick around the edges, so I can be a little more aggressive at getting this finish off. When I flip these older, more rustic type of pieces, I don't make everything perfect. So on the top, I'm gonna do some staining and I want this to sort of show its age and show that it has a story. So I won't wood fill everything. I will make sure that it has some character, really. Um, when I flip older pieces like this, I like it to sort of tell its story. I flip mainly 80s and 90s dressers, so if you follow my channel, you know that's what I really like to do is to flip 80s and 90s style pieces. But when I'm flipping something that's a little older like this, I like it to show its history. My Surf Prep 3x4 Ray Sander with the squishy foam abrasive pad is making quick work of these legs. I use my Surf Prep Sander on virtually every flip that we do. 
I highly recommend one of these if you plan on getting into flipping your own pieces of furniture. You can use my discount code lemons to lemonade 10 over on the surf prep website to save 10% off your purchase on anything on their site. I'll be sure to link that code in the description box below as well. It is time to start priming and painting my piece, but first I need to cover up this beautiful natural wood top that I've just worked so hard to get the finish off of. So I'll make sure that this is covered before I start. I prefer to use white pigmented shellac primer from Sherwin-Williams. I load it into my gravity fed HVLP spray gun. I have to make sure I strain this first to get any of the clumps out as it is pretty thick. But it offers excellent coverage and it goes through my spray gun really well. I'll use two full coats of primer on this piece to prevent any bleed through. There's very little dry time in between coats, and when this is fully dry, I will take a light grit sanding pad to this to make sure it is a smooth finish for my paint. For this piece, my client has chosen the color Alabaster from Sherwin-Williams. I am using the Emerald Urethane Trim Paint in a satin finish. The Emerald Urethane Trim Paint has a built-in top coat, so it's going to save me a step in the end. It's also water-based, and the Alabaster color, which is a pearly white, is my most requested color for my custom orders. I'll do two coats of Alabaster on this buffet for full coverage. Every month on our channel, I fill in our 401k goal tracker. We use all of the furniture sales to help us get ahead for our retirement. Now that we've paid off all of our debt, we're getting back on track with where we need to be for our savings goals. Here's some of the pieces we've sold this month. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd love for you to cheer us on as you see how far we can get this year just from our side hustle of flipping furniture. My client for this piece has chosen to go with more of like a beachy farmhouse vibe. It's kind of what I'm calling it. So in order to, for me to achieve that, it's going to take some different waxes on top of the paint. Even though this paint has a built-in poly in it, the age of this wood, it's so um, dry and thirsty. If I put brown wax or any color wax on top of this, it's going to soak it in and not allow me to work with it and uh, take it down to the technique that I need it to look like, as you're gonna see in just a minute, and I'll show you how I do that. So before I can put any colored waxes on this very absorbent wood, I'm going to use Minwax Finishing Wax on top of this. It's a natural color, so it's clear. And this will give me a nice coat and give me some time to spread around the color waxes before it sets.
All right, now that I've got my natural color wax on, one of the trickier parts of this is that the client has asked for a tan wax on the top. So it's like a really light, again, like sort of beachy vibe that we're going for. The only thing I have in my arsenal is a brown finishing wax by Jolie. I am going to take, you can see it's really dark. This color is going to be way too dark for the look that we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to cut this sort of half and half with my natural paste and then my brown paste until we get to the color that I want to see on this cabinet. Once I have the brown wax applied, I'll go back with a lint free rag and wipe off small sections at a time until I have the desired effect that we're looking for. We're going for more driftwood feel than antiqued. So I'm taking some of my white wax and going back in and just lightening up certain sections again. So it looks like a beachy driftwood vibe. These drawers were in a bit of a sad state, so I did a light scuff sand on top of them and then went back in with some furniture wax to give them a little bit of refreshing. The old hardware on this was perfect for the look that we are going for, but it needs to be cleaned up. So I started a vinegar bath on the stove and I'll load all of my hardware in there and let it boil on a low simmer uh, for about 30 minutes or so. And you'll see the amount of gunk that we're about to get off of those. While the hardware is simmering, it's time to get started on the top. Before I apply anything to the top, I like to take a tack cloth over it just to get off any remaining dirt and dust. I'll be using walrus oil furniture finish on top of this buffet. I've chosen to use walrus oil to bring out the natural grain on the top. Walrus oil is applied with a cloth and buffed off after a few hours. I like to let mine sit overnight in most cases. On this buffet, I applied two coats of walrus oil for this finish. Here's a little before and after of this awesome product. 
If you're interested in trying out any walrus oil products, there is a link in the description of this video for 10% off of your order. Now that my hardware is done simmering, yuck, look at all the gunk that came off of there. I will take these out of the pan and give them just a little scrub with Barkeeper's Friend. We're going for a patinaed look on these so it won't take much to get what we're going for. I don't want them super clean, but just shined up a little bit. One quick look at our before, before we get to our after. I loved recreating this piece for my client. I think I got pretty close to the inspiration pick that I'm gonna show you in just a second. I love the way that the top turned out on this especially. It was so awesome to see this come back to life. You'll have to let me know if you think I nailed that farmhouse beachy vibe on this when you see the inspo pick. the inspiration picture that we went off of for this week's flip. This buffet is listed online for over $1,200 and I recreated this look for my client for fractions of that cost. If you want more insider tips on how I flip custom orders, be sure to watch this video here. I'm already busy working on my next piece and I can't wait to show you. Be sure to join me next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.